I think the foundation of being a buyer's agent really is knowledge and due diligence. They're the two main parts of it. So really just making sure that you understand what's going on in the market currently. Don't look at what prices have been sold six months ago because it's not relevant. As you said, it is a changing market. And just make sure you've got your A team lined up to help you along the way, whether that be a great solicitor, mortgage broker, um, make sure you've got your finance in place, of course, that sort of thing. So really just making sure that you've got your whole team to back you up so you can move quickly and swiftly. Because most buyers agents do buy property within 24 to 48 hours of seeing it. Now, do you find in this market, you know, we are seeing that there is a slowdown. We're seeing some yeah. properties being passed and in the negotiations happening afterwards. Are you seeing that straight away that, there, that there's a lot more willingness to negotiate afterwards? Absolutely. We'd say about 75% of the properties we're buying at the moment are prior to auction. Prior. And the auctions that we have attended, only one in three are selling at auction. And Big whereabouts are you, what sort of part area are you talking about? Uh, we're looking at the North Shore, Northern Beaches, Eastern Suburbs and Inner West. So all in Sydney? All Pretty much all over Sydney. Sydney. And how about you Nathan? Yeah look I've um, I guess over the last decade um, you know negotiated over 10,000 real estate transactions and uh, <coughs> from my buyers agency it's more of a national buyers agency. I uh, buy a lot of stuff in Queensland and, and Sydney and uh, you know I love markets when they're on the decline. Uh, this market that we're looking at at the moment isn't necessarily just because the property market's in a little bit of strife, it's because the financial system is changing and the banks are changing with the lending practices. And you know, when you see times like we're seeing at the moment, um, you know, I guess that the opportunities come up as people are motivated and you know, I love this sort of market. And when I first started investing, uh, going back 15 years ago, uh, what you know, I used to spend about eight hours a day looking for properties, uh, researching areas. There was no realestate.com. There wasn't the mm. infrastructure that's out there today. Big work. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And uh, I guess over the years, I've built the relationships with the agents and being able to, you know, understand how the real estate agents work and what they're looking for, you know, and using that market that we've got at the moment against them because it's not, not when you go into negotiate, at the end of the day, it needs to be a win-win outcome. So if you can show the agent that you're going to end up buying the property off them and remove all the barriers to get there, but all they have to do is work on the price, then you can get a cheaper price. So um, I love buying things when they're on sale. I'm a bit of a you know, tight ass when it comes yeah. to buying things <laughs> and buying property. I was just in the Gold Coast the other day and uh, I actually took a video of a property that I just bought uh, probably about a year ago for 622 grand. The owner of it paid 10 years ago 600,000, right? Wow. The agent mm -hmm. didn't know what he was selling. And uh, I knew what the land, you know, had as fundamentals to it. And the property uh, is worth just on a land value basis, one and a half mil. So it's you know, understanding the market, having a relationship with agents and, you know, knowing what the deal's worth to be able to, you know, take all your information to the agent and be able to crunch on the price. Mm. So opportunities are out there. Um, you know, this is a, a really awesome market. I've, I've had over the course, there's about eight different sort of repo companies out there which um, are in Australia, which when properties go to repossession from the oh, banks, right. um, you know, these companies are in charge of disposing of them. And uh, those guys have started to call me up and, you know, offer me deals. And, you know, it's a really exciting time out there. So, mm. you know, I've seen all over the headlines over the last few years, people saying it's una got the unable to buy properties and stuff like that. You know, this is the time because, you know, the banks aren't always going to stay at this environment we're at at the moment. So, yeah. But is there a danger in a market that's falling? Or you say you're out for a bargain and you think, OK, great, I've found a bargain. But yeah. how do we know when we've reached the bottom? I mean, that's, that's the real problem, isn't it? It's, you know, like buying anything on and then finding out they've discounted it further the following week, mm. except with property, that's uh, a, a far bigger loss that you're possibly dealing with. Yeah. I think it just depends, you know, how long you're holding it for, what your strategy is. Is this a home that you're going to be living in and holding it for a number of years? Because as we all know, I mean, I've been buying property 30 years now. I started in 1988. I've seen a lot of picks and troughs in the market. And, you know, if you're going to be holding it long term and you think you've got a good deal and you've done all your research, then buy it at that level. If it drops again, it will come back up. Now, for people, it's funny that you say 88 because I was in real estate in that time oh, as really? well, a long time ago for me. I, I yeah. got out of it on this side. It's safer. Um, how, do, how do people at home watching and, you know, you're talking about getting the knowledge that you guys have and you've got like, you know, decades and decades of knowledge and you're yeah. doing this every day. How do people oh. know? that the property's in distress? How do they understand that it is a good time to be getting in, that, there, that it is a, a bargain? 
Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah looking at the, the, the properties out there, so, um, like, I feel like, you know, you know, if your child's sick, if like, you know, you can tell that the kid isn't right and you're in sync with the child because you're, you know, caring for the child. Uh, with the property market, I feel that, you know, my heart beats with the property market, you know, and mm. I can tell when there's inconsistencies out there just due to the fact of, you know, lots of transactions that I actually do in the property space. Um, and I can tell from the way that real estate agents behave, how they act, you know, like going back three years ago, agents would, oh, no, there's a buyer there, like, they're, they didn't want to take your calls, but now they're calling they're chasing you on a, they're chasing right. you on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis. Um, you can see that properties are staying <clears throat> on the market for lo a lot longer. Mm. Uh, you can see that prices are price reduction, 30 grand, price reduction, 40 grand. And, you know, I think a lot of people get scared uh, of taking action in these sort of markets, but these are the times to take action because, mm. you know, you see people out there and they say, oh, the property market <clears throat> might fall by X amount or Y amount or whatever. Um, you know, I think if... You know, I think it was Harry Dent that came out recently and he's been coming out every year for the last 20 years or so saying that properties will fall 40%. If properties fell 40%, there'd be a lot bigger problems in the world that we see, right? Mm -hmm. the, the banks mm -hmm. would have problems and the whole system would have problems. But um, f looking out there and understanding what actual true value is. So uh, I remember back in 2003, 2004, it was a very soft market. Like it was a very similar market in Sydney to what we're seeing at the moment. And uh, that's when I first started buying properties when I was 18 years old in 2003. And I, I went out there and I was looking at these properties in Mount Druitt. I remember first million bucks in, in Mount Druitt. And uh, the properties that were selling, I was picking up stuff for 130, 140 where owners had paid too much right at the peak at 300, 320. And I realised to myself that if someone's paid this beforehand, mm. then, you know, and I'm picking up on sale today, and there's three keys I look at when buying property below market value. So if I'm picking it up 20% or 15% from day one, doesn't matter if I'm in a heated market, or a soft market or whatever. If I'm picking it up, you know, 15% below market value, I've got a buffer in place. So if it slips back any further, then, you know, I'm not going to be out of pocket if I need to sell it. Uh, making sure that the cash flow is neutral. So it's the rent is covering all the accounts rates, the water rates, the mortgage and all that sort of stuff. And it's got good upside for growth. So if it's got the key fundamentals to it, then I can take a property through any sort of market cycle. So it's not, yeah. Okay. Amanda, when people are watching, how do they know? Can, what tips can you give when people are starting the negotiation process? So they're either going pre-auction, as you're saying, you're doing some of them pre-auction now. Yeah. On this show, we go to auctions, so we see it obviously happening afterwards. So yeah. what, can you, what tips can you give for people watching that, to understand the negotiation process and sort of how to start that? I think if you're going to try to buy it, whether it's prior to auction or after auction because it's passed in, is really making sure that you, again, you understand the price, that you understand any fundamentals that are um, about the property that might give you a little bit of a leeway. Maybe there's a leaking roof that you've done in your building and pest inspection that can give you a little bit more um, of a discount. And really understanding um, how many people were either at the auction, did it pass in, did you actually go? Do you, do you understand, um, is it really a hot property that a lot of people are interested in or is it only you know, one or two people? And really going down as low as you can. If you know the property similar down the road sold for you know, $200,000 less or $20,000 less, using that to your advantage and then knock off a little bit more. Really just using as much knowledge as you've built up and not just running in and like in the last three years in the heated market. The emotion. Yeah, don't, don't get emotional about it. That's a really important and, and always keep the agent up to date. I think people try to play it so cool that they forget to keep the agent in the process and then it gets sold out from under them and they say, hang on a minute, I was interested in that. But they played it so cool that the agent didn't come back to them. I, th I think that's really crucial is keeping the agent on side. Uh, mm. The agent... A lot of people think that real estate agents are the devil where, you know, they're just human beings trying to do a job and trying to get a sale and they want to make some money to feed their family and whatnot. Mm. Um, if you can work with the agent, so uh, trying to remove all the, the, the barriers and, and whatnot and saying, I really want to make this deal happen, but I've only got X amount of dollars to spend and, and working with the agent for a win-win outcome. So. And as Nathan said, it's a win-win. Like, that, to me, that's something that I've always said when I say when I go to deal with an agent. We understand you've got to have a win for your vendor. I've got to have a win for my buyer. Let's see what we really think the property's worth mm -hmm. and see if we can get this deal done. I mean, in the end, we're all there to do a deal.